Hi, I'm John the Engineer, and these are my responses from the debate that took place at Laurier University, Branford campus, on October the 8th during the Branford mayoral election. I'm pushing my major plank, which is bus bucks, paying students with bus credits, bus tickets to do community service, especially shoveling snow after storms. And uh, I explain it. If you want to see the whole debate, there'll be a link to that posted below. Well, I'm John the Engineer Turmel. I've worn this when I pick at banks and when I pick at anti-protest, anti-poverty protests. And if you Google for anti-poverty system, you'll find that less software comes up. It's time bank software that allows people to help each other and pay each other with one-hour bills. Simple concept, time banking, right? So anyway, it's spreading around the world. The rise of local currencies is making the news, big news recently. And I started it all when I financed the first lets 30 years ago. But when I ran in 2010, I had difficulty explaining to people how it could work. So I said in 2010, we're going to call it a bus bucks campaign because I want to pay the kids with bus tickets for empty seats to shovel our snow and clean our parks and do useful stuff like that. Now, I didn't get elected, it didn't get done, but Hong Kong next year used their octopus bus cards to pay their students credits to do work. So it's doable. Their students got jobs, ours can too. So anyway, now since then I've surveyed candidates in the other ranks, and we've got Jennifer McDonald in Ward 2 and David Swanson in Ward 5 who support paying students with bus tickets to shovel our snow these upcoming winters. And don't forget the global warming hoaxers who use the trick to hide the decline in the temperature over the last 16 years. Probably are, we're going to get more snow, it's going to be a bad one. And wouldn't it be nice if kids, instead of going on a street corner on a can't go to school, their clothes could all be out there shoveling our snow for bus tickets, for empty bus seats? Think! This is an idea that can go global. Now, I switched to the bus tickets to explain it to kids how community currency would work because I had difficulty explaining it to adults in the 207 and 203 elections where I wanted to pay people with tax credit notes to do work for the city. Same idea. You get prepaid taxes and that can be traded around to anybody who uses that. Well, so that's what I want to bring to the Brantford election is I want to bring alternative currency software that allows me to set up a bus buck system on their B cards. Everybody's got their B cards in Brantford. Well, not everybody, but all the kids do. I got mine. Anyway, just like the octopus bus card. And these can all be melded together. In other words, if your kid is up there shoveling your driveway, getting paid with bus tickets, those bus tickets can be used to pay your taxes because they're using bond bucks. Ah, in Argentina, those tax credits, Instead of calling them tax credits, they said if we can issue a bond, a million dollar bond, why can't we issue a ten dollar bond and pay people with them? So when their banks shut and down, and what would you do when your banks shut down? They all started paying their employees with provincial bonds. Can it deter them? Same with Russia. Thanks. <laughs> Just taking a short break to show you a few interviews I did with kids just later that day and see what their responses were. What's your name? Hunter. Hi Hunter, would you work for 12 bus bucks an hour, six bus tickets, shoveling snow, doing good stuff for old people? Yeah, sure I would. Thank you very much. Spread the word to your friends. Tell your parents if we start the bus buck system, you can shovel your driveway first and get paid with bus tickets. All right, thanks very much. I'm running for mayor of Brantford. What's your name? John Termel. I want to pay students with bus tickets to shovel the snow and do city work if they want. Do you think you and your friends would take 12 bus bucks an hour to shovel the snow and do stuff for the city? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Listen, tell your parents that if we start it, you can do your driveways first and get paid for it, okay? Right. Bus awesome. tickets, free money, right? Yeah, awesome. Good stuff, thanks a lot kids. Awesome. What's your name? My name's Carlos. Hi Carlos, what's your name? Autumn. All right, Autumn. Sierra. Thanks a lot, bye. <laughs> I'm John Termel. I'm running for Mayor of Brantford. 
and I want to pay all students with 12 bus bucks or six bus tickets an hour to do community service for the city like shoveling after snowstorms. Do you think you and your friends would work for 12 bus bucks an hour? Yeah. All right, thanks a lot. Tell your parents, if we start the bus buck system, you can shovel your driveway first. Yeah, sounds cool. Thanks a lot. What's your name? Connor O'Donnell. Okay, thanks. Tell your parents so, because they didn't know about it last election. Yeah. I want to pay students with bus tickets. Empty bus rides to do work for the city like shoveling snow during snowstorms. You think your friends would take 12 bus tickets an hour, six, I mean 12 bus bucks, six bus tickets an hour to work for the city? Would you work for 12 bus bucks? Yeah. Okay, how about you? Would you work for 12 bus bucks? What's your names? Hannah. Hey, well listen, you tell your parents that if we start the bus bucks system, you can shovel your driveway first, pay with bus tickets. Okay? Think your unemployed friends would work for bus tickets? Probably. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. I, I'm running for mayor. Yes. And I want to pay the students with bus tickets yes. to shovel the snow, do community service for us. So I'm asking kids. Do you think? I'm not a kid though. I know. Do you All think? Right. You think they'd work for six bus problem. tickets an hour? Come on, twelve bus bucks. But there's That's, lots of kids who want money and can't find jobs, so probably yes. And the point is, if you can pay your taxes with the bus bucks as well, yeah. every, all the stores will take them as well. Yeah. I want an army of kids shoveling my snow after the plow passes. Yeah. What's your name? Nadia. Thank you, Nadia. Yeah. All right. Unilets Branford Facebook page. Okay. I'll post a link tonight. All right. Okay. Thanks. Oh, don't expect me to be. <laughs> Don't expect me to be a hands-on mayor. If there's a snowstorm, he can help shovel you out, but I'd have students paying pay with bus tickets. So don't expect that. Now, qualification, mayor, well, chief executive officer. And qualifications, well, 98 percentile math, 100 percent university physics, A electronic engineering fourth year, four years teaching assistant of Canada's only mathematics of gambling course, after my career, if you Google for great Canadian gambler, I come up, and I was known as the professor, and every poker game has a guy called the professor who knows the odds, and I was known as the professor at the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City of Rounders fame if you saw the movie. So, if I tell you there's one way to win out of 10 doing this, and two ways to win out of 10 doing that, who's gonna stand up and argue with me? Okay? So don't expect politics of the future to be the same as guys who don't have game theory. You can, I can bet I'm right. And that's what you want. The winningest way to go. The least losingest way to go, which happens to be my professional specialty. I'm a professional poker player right now down at the Brantford Casino that finances all my elections, all my court activities for the past 35 years, including this software. I'm not a professional gambler, although as a politician and having spent as many years in elections as I have, it probably could be said that I am. Well, I have to agree, it certainly fits in, but I would have more an idea of it as a student center than uh, classes or anything like that. But back to my favorite theme, imagine you could pay part of your tuition by proctoring and cleaning up the market center. Imagine you could pay part of your tuition by proctoring the whole campus, policing it, making sure there's no crime and no dirt around. Gee, I'd take Brantford Laurier bucks, especially if I can use them on the bus and I can use them to pay taxes. Again, it just goes to show that the basis of all these currencies is always the human time putting in the work to back them up. Even if I trick you into thinking it's a bus seat making this coupon valuable. It's a kid working an hour with a shovel. And if I trick you into believing it's a tax credit that makes you... No, it's the fact you delivered work to get it. And the same thing if I make you... Well, no, a babysitting IOU, that's pretty clear. Everybody knows everybody wants one of those, right? mechanic wants them. Everybody will take a babysitting IOU. Well, anyway, the point is Jennifer McDonald will take emails for people who want to join the babysitting network, and David Swanson will take emails for people who want to join the shoveling network, because community currency, community service counts in a time bank. 
When I do accordion concerts, free. Well, no, I get a registered IOU two hours of community service. I can either post it on my web page or get an IOU, a piece of currency that we use in our network. So anybody can do community currency and back it up with useful labor, which becomes a token in our barter exchange. Now, wouldn't it be nice to have the city connected and the bus connected? With all this together, we could set an example for the world on homegrown local financial reform. I wasn't sure how you were going to tie that one in, but that was good. <laughs> well, it's difficult to do a deal when both sides don't have enough money. And obviously, it's easier to do a deal when both sides have enough money. Now, of course, we're paying an extra million and a half in interest on the debt this year, and many more millions as well, which we could save if we were to switch to an alternate currency. Now, we can show them how to do it, too. Except, they used to do it already. 200 years ago, Indians could pay for stuff with wampum beads. An IOU or the horse or a beaver pelt or something. Even the whites took it. And somehow or other, the whites then came over and talked to the Indians into giving up their local wampum currency and getting into the unemployment lineup with the white guys. Imagine that. They had their own alternate currency, and now maybe we can talk them into starting up their own, so they also won't be short of currency in doing their negotiations with us. It's the same thing with the boundary negotiations. When I got here in 2003, what about the boundary negotiations? And in 2006, next election, in 2010, and again this year, what about boundary? Can't you guys agree after 11 years? No! Nobody can take the cut because nobody's got enough money. Now, that's my point. If both organizations start saving all that interest, and the only victims of community currency are the banks. If we stop using bank license by the government for money and create our own, the only people who get hurt are the banks because they're losing the interest. And if we're all saving it all, everybody who does this alternate currency locally, it's got to be easier to come to deals and negotiations. Well, if I ever had a great, heard of a great idea for spending bus bucks or bond bucks, that's it. Pay people to do it. Actually, haven't they trained dogs in some municipalities to pick up bottles and bring them to the machine to get a treat? Surely we could train humans to do it and go pick up a reward, right? A bond buck or a tax credit. So it's a perfect example of a need for a community currency that could really solve the problem completely. Well, if you go to my website, johntermel.com, you'll find videos, and if you YouTube for bus bucks, you'll find out how in Argentina, they found that humble people unemployed, given the opportunity to offer services to these big barter fairs where they use sort of paper credit toast, one hour bills, enables them to find something useful to do. Walk your dog, water your plants, read to a blind person. I mean, there's, I mean, when they say the poor will always be with us, I mean, they don't even know what poverty is. Do you know what poverty is? Scarcity. Well, that's a bad crop. Wipes out all the apple trees. Okay, that's scarcity. What about poverty? Poverty wiped out the money trees, right? Oh, we've got no money. Money trees got wiped out. Poverty. Poverty is an artificial shortage of money created by the banking system who lend everybody 10 in principal and demand they all pay back principal plus interest, 11, creating a mortgage in French meaning death gamble where someone always comes up short, poor, and gets knocked out of the game. So yes, the poor will always be with you if I don't get elected mayor. But if I do, and I have sufficient money to reward them for their contributions, that everybody can do something useful, 
guess what? Maybe they didn't call me the anti-poverty engineer for nothing. Google for it. Well, I already mentioned the solution to the security problem with more proctors paid for with tuition credits. Right? You could have two students walking through the parking garage. Solves that problem with a camera. I mean, the point is, if you start up your own local currency system, you can do things yourselves. Can't be done if you got to wait for outside money. Okay? It's been done before. We can do it too. Now, um, well, again, what's wrong with having more pro proctors? And does anybody in the place object to some students paying their tuition by policing campus? Anybody think that's a bad idea? I know you're not going to vote for it. But do you think it's a bad idea paying some students their tuition to be the proctors of our campus? You get the general response? Everybody seems to like the idea of giving these students jobs paid for with university credits. Why not try and get it organized? A couple of the candidates are already on board about this, but this is a question about fluoride in the water. And I'm sure a lot of you people understand what I'm talking about. Uh, Brantford was one of the first cities in Canada to put fluoride in the water and it had the largest concentration of any city in Canada. And fluoride is actually a uh, poison that's stronger or as strong as arsenic. Uh, the amount of fluoride that's in a tube of toothpaste will kill a child. It says on the back of the toothpaste, if you swallow it, get you know, medical assistance immediately. And yet, uh, there's been no movement in the council or uh, through the morality's office to even have a debate about the issue. And this is extremely serious. If you go on the internet, it's just filled with, with I mean, absolute horror stories about how bad this stuff really is. Uh, the, the, the argument for it is that it prevents tooth decay, but that argument is from the early 40s. But there's been a huge increase in dental care, hygienics, uh, fluoride in the toothpaste, and all these things since, which are accounting for the improvement in the tooth decay, not the fluoride. The fluoride's like the devil taking credit for, the, for God's work, you know, so to speak. So I think it's time that this gets brought forward and, and the city of Brantford, which is basically getting drugged, uh, has an opportunity to say whether they want to keep it or not because most of the communities around the world are getting rid of it. And Brantford won't even talk about it. That's my point. Any candidates wish to comment on that? I'll take it. The, uh, the issue came up when we were on council before. We had information from both sides and the benefits of using fluoride in the water far away the benefits of removing it. So I would not support removing fluoride. Anybody else support fluoride first? Mm -hmm. There are no good reasons for putting fluoride in our water. It's a neurotoxin. March, uh, where is it? March of uh, this year, the Lancet Neurology, Volume 3, Issue 3, said since 206, Studies have documented additional development, you, uh, I can't see, eurotoxicants, fluoride. Fluoride's toxic! Now, what's the great reason for putting it in our water? Prevent cavities? Hey, for people concerned about cavities, I, as mayor, will promise to deliver free toothbrushes. <laughs> okay? You want to, and besides, 90% of the water doesn't even go in your mouth. It goes straight out to the environment. And you know, if they didn't have to pass, if they didn't pass it through you and give it to the water companies for free, they would have to bury it like a hazardous waste. So they've managed to pollute the environment with fluoride by passing it through us. And these low-tech clowns sit there and say, there are good reasons. There's Can no it, good uh, reason to take poison, especially it, uh, cavities. Can it? Excuse me, that upsets me, you know. Yeah, we got that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny because this issue's been going on forever, and, and um, I mean, I was born and raised here, <laughs> and um, I can't tell you that my teeth are particularly good, so all the Brantford water with fluoride in it that I've been drinking all these years, I'm not a good example of it. And I, I still, I mean, I've looked at the documentation from both sides, and I, I do not see, and I cannot understand uh, the explanations 
around the concept of ingesting fluoride to improve your teeth because the ability for it to actually get to your teeth is almost non-existent once it's ingested. So other than the fact that you're drinking it and it might be touching your teeth, but then there's not enough fluoride in the water to be able to even act that way as you would get with toothpaste. So I, so I have the concerns about this because I don't understand the science or the logic behind it, but I did ask a question and it was asked in this council and we had fire and brimstone railed down on top of us because we're not allowed to discuss this issue. And within public health, it is an issue that is uh, sacrosanct. You're not allowed to discuss it. Um, and there was a, a phenomenal lobby for it. So I don't see the benefits from it. I mean, I'm, my own mouth, I don't see the benefits from it. And I don't understand how or where the benefits ultimately be shown. And it's not been shown to me yet. So I think it is a discussion that needs to be had in a very real way, and it is true. Many communities in Ontario, in Quebec, um, in Europe, uh, countries have banned it. Um, so many communities have been moving away from this. Even the last four years, communities in Ontario have decided to take fluoride out um, for no good reason other than the fact that they can't demonstrate that there's a benefit for having it in there. Uh, you can go first. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, how many communities in uh, southern Ontario have naturally poured fluoride in the water based on well system? Anyone know? Seven. What are we doing? I, I agree with the question. It's one molecule off Prozac. You're correct. Okay. I understand the concerns behind it, but let, let's ask the next question. How many people in Brantford actually ingest the water straight out of the tap? I see an awful lot of water, uh, bottles of water being sold at all kinds of different areas. I don't know what you're doing. I'm, uh, I'm uh, not drinking I can't the tap. Have beer, you ask. Can't hear you. You ask. So, what, but I think it's worth the discussion. I think it's worth asking the people, what do you think you'd like to see happen here? And we're going to echo that with action. Thank you. And I don't want to ask. I want to tell. Well, maybe you would be so lucky enough as to have an opportunity for your daughters to earn bus bucks and pay for that shuttle to Hamilton. Now, there's no shuttle to the north. Yes. Did you know what one of the major attractions of time banks are? Not just babysitting. Rides. People really want rides who don't have wheels. And that seems to be one of the most traded services in a time bank. So yeah, if you can't get organized to provide bus bucks that can pay for a shuttle to Cambridge, let's join a time bank and organize our own shuttle to Cambridge. Now, I'm in favor of 100% subsidized transit so that we can maximize the efficiency and get people out of their cars. Now, most communities pay 80, 90% of their subsidization anyway, so why not go the whole hundred? Now, everybody's got a reason to get out of their cars. Oh, but we're going to need more buses. Well, guess what? If we got a crew of kids shoveling the snow, maybe we save some money on the snow budget. And if we have a whole 12 kids going out with each landscaper for the city, helping, he just orders them what to do now instead of doing it himself, maybe we can save money for the city, buy more buses. Gee, 1.5 million extra interest this year. We could save that and buy more buses. So, if we can maximize the use of buses, it's going to solve a lot of environmental problems. It's going to solve everybody's problems because they can now be rushing, going by every half an hour, 24 hours a day. I like that too. But we can't afford it right now on a cash budget. But we might be able to afford it if we've got a half of our transactions covered in local money and we're saving half of all that interest or more. So basically that's it. Subsidize fully, get people off the, out of their cars. We will now have to... Well, if you haven't noticed the difference up here tonight, all I've talked about is my one point plan. Interest-free local currency. 
and I've explained all the different ways it can be used, whether it's backed up with bus rides or tax credits or babysitting hours or anything at all, dog walking, it's so easy. And here we are all starving with real misery in the streets, you know, and maybe what, 13 students show up here to, to find out about what's going on and the rest are clappers for their candidates. You know, what a sad experience in democracy that people have so given up hope at us. They don't even come to bother listening to us. And I challenge you, you want to know about political rhetoric? I challenge you when you walk out the door to make a list of the candidates up here and try and remember what they said. Okay? And I bet you can't remember two things one of these other candidates said. Because all it was is things should be better, I want things better for you, this is terrible. Stuff, rhetoric, you hear forever that doesn't ever end with a punchline. So try that. Go out there and put their names down and try and remember two things they said. And if you go past one, most people can't even think of one when I interview with them out the door. But me, you heard it every single time. It's an insufficiency of money causing all of our problems. And solving that ins insufficiency, that gap with local currencies is working in other cities around the country. So, the country, the world, just go do some research. Brantford doesn't have to stay last. It can actually be first at something.